Okay, I'm gonna start looking into the uh, distributor on this. I got the battery connected, battery disconnect switch, and I went ahead and mounted the fuse, modern fuse on there to uh, get ready to connect the coil and set up the uh, ignition on this. Um, I got it to where the starter's on and it's spinning over and uh, so what I need to do is pull the cap off and this is an original one it's you can see where it's there's no button right there so I'm going to have to get a different cap and uh, let me get you in here to see where you can so To get, it's actually pretty difficult to get in there to get the uh, clamp loose when you have this heater box on here. And this barely comes off. So, that off. And I've already, I left this loose. Take it over off. And, uh, I left it loose so I could just pull it in and out, but otherwise you'd have to uh, loosen the lock nut and turn the uh, set screw that locks, pins it against the uh, shaft here. So what I'm going to do is probably take this apart and uh, clean it up a little bit. When I was painting the engine, I painted the, uh, the distributor also because I knew I wanted to put a new cap and body on it. But I need to uh, clean this up a little bit and so I can just go over to the workbench and, and work on the distributor. So I think what I'm gonna do is mount it in the device. it a little bit actually an original that my dad was using I guess and uh, wires broke off on it and it's supposed to be the shielded cable that I may be able to use this with just a little jumper wire and uh, for hot wiring so I'm not going to throw that away and uh, next I need to take the center screw out with the cam how tight it is Boy, is that tight. Golly, that was tight. Yeah, 
Yeah, this distributor hasn't been apart in 40 years. Normally this cam will just come right off. Well, now they come off. washer out of there before I lose it. Maybe that's the wrong washer anyways. There's the right washer right there. Let's get moving. Normally, this distributor cam, you can just lift it right off. I've never had one that was this difficult before. I finally had to get another set of lock and pliers and was able to twist back and forth and get it to actually move. And then uh, eventually it was able to remove it. Well, she finally let go. Never had one that was that difficult to come on and off. He's down there. Okay. You got that. Got this. Hmm. Wire's been taped. Paper taped. Masking tape. That's not good. I'll lose your spring. And let's see if I can uh, get these screws. This one's coming. Get this lower plate out of here. in the washer and yeah, another washer I also got a condenser in there and 
vents are uh, not attached anymore. Mm, spider webs, but the uh, little plate holding that on there that was maybe soldered no longer soldered. Okay. Back to that was the problem. Didn't realize there was still a condenser in there. Let me get this uh, condenser screw out of there. <laughs> yeah, let me show you inside. Well, some kind of bug was making its home in there. But not super corroded though. So let's clean up the uh, eviction notice here. So really, it needs to be bead blasted and uh, cleaned up. And uh, of course, I'm not going to do that because <laughs> I don't have a bead blaster. I have sandpaper. So checking the, the distributor, what you want to do is wiggle the shaft side to side. This one's actually not too bad. Yeah, it's got a little bit of up and down play, which you can put a uh, washer in there. And uh, it doesn't appear like this one has a washer in there. But you'd have to knock the pin out of the shaft underneath here. It's been peened over and uh, you'd have to grind it off, knock the pin through. And I don't really feel like doing that. So I'm gonna just try to clean it up. 
grit and grime off of it and get it to where you could put some oil down there. And there's a bushing right inside here. And there's a bushing right inside there. But if you don't keep them oiled up, it'll uh, seize up on you. Got any oil in this thing or not? Ooh, too much. Too much, too much, too much. That'll uh, work its way down. This isn't a uh, the modern drilled shaft where it has you can put a, a top screw cabinet screw is not drilled out and the shaft's not drilled out so this is just an original I can already see the oils coming out down here so it's lubed up pretty good like I said it doesn't have a whole lot of slop in it so you know the side to side movements what you're looking for gravity will take care of the up and down movement And you want to be careful when you're rebuilding these to not get super carried away with the paint. Some of these parts need to be able to ground. And uh, if you paint everything, it won't have a good ground. So... Not bad. And here's the, uh, the oiler on the side. I could put a drop in there. There we go. Let's see if I have a hand wipe. Have off. These are sweet patina. These are El Cheapo. The jungle web. Okay. Let me look through my parts and see if I have a, a lower plate. Okay, looking through my uh, part stash, all I can come up with is these uh, wireless lower plates. And I'm not super keen on using it, but <laughs> that's all I got. 
versus the uh, the original. You know, if I got some more wire, you know, I could reuse this, but this is just so bad. You know, it's got paper tape on it, a little electrical tape, a little electrical tape, and then the wires are just like barely hanging on, so really need to resolder it. So this is gonna go into my save the uh, old parts bag and in case I have to go back to using the old parts but the uh, I'll try rebuilding with the new stuff so this uh, bolts down, and that you have you have to have a special upper plate too. So I can't use my other other upper plate because this has this little kind of ball that it rubs on here to make contact. So it has to uh, use a special set of uh, points and uh, upper plate. You know, you could probably rig the other plate, but you're supposed to use this. So, anyway. And uh, I tried to sand and scrape the... Uh, to get a good contact. And... Little screws which fingers don't handle very well. I didn't realize the camera had switched to time lapse here, so let's see, first I was putting the lower plate on with the two screws, which they're very small, and my clumsy fingers made it difficult. And I made sure it was making good contact and uh, put the spring in there and had to sand to be able to get the cam onto the shaft. It was just being difficult. So I sanded it using the drill and I sanded the lower shaft just to clean it up before putting it in the engine. And I was able to get the cam on there where it would actually rotate to be able to set the timing. Grease the, the cam lobe a little bit with a little bit of grease. And here I am setting the points gap. And there's on this upper plate, there's two set screws on this newer upper plate and the condensers mounted on the upper plate on this new upper plate. And the final steps, putting the distributor body and cap and uh, wire on. Okay, she's set and now I just gotta mount it and uh, time it. Yeah, this is a wireless lower plate, and not really sure I like that setup. And it has the condenser up on top, so you actually have to put a false condenser down below here, which I, I don't have. And uh, I don't really want to add. A, another condenser because I don't know what having two condensers would do to it. It's like double the spark or half the spark. I'm not sure. Well, I was just looking at this, which is the, uh, goes to the ignition switch. And, uh, I don't really have the, no, don't have the cowl mounted. I'm thinking of, you know, I just got this little on off switch and I'll just set that up somewhere and wire it to this little nub. Somehow. So, I have to figure that out sometime. 
Okay, back at the board for today. I've sort of worked a little bit on temp date tank versus original tank. Testing that cowl and whether the tank would actually sit upright enough. And it's kind of precarious sitting on there. So still not sure on that. Still need to work on selecting a carb that I'm going to do. Um, I can't really do coil. Could start on the distributor. Um, but today I got the starter and generator and belt and starting to, um, I worked a little bit on the distributor. It's not done. And next I need to work on coil distributor starter battery cables, you know, wiring and set the timing. So those are probably the, the next two things I'm gonna do. And I sort of mocked it up, you know, to where it looks like it would start and run, but I gotta pull the distributor back apart and uh, I wanna do some checks to see if the, uh, if this is gonna work. This is a old ignition armored cable that came apart and uh, you know, broke off right here. So I attached another, soldered another wire to it. I think this came off my uh, sport cube. They had a housing wire nut right here connecting a cable and you know, it was actually running and working, but I replaced the whole cable on that one. But um, I kept this so I could hook it up. And what I did was I put a little toggle switch over here. That's not a toggle, it's a pull on off. But I want to I want to test the switch. You know, it's brand new Chinesium, so whether it's going to work or not. So I got that. So my ignition would come through there to the distributor, and I can kill the engine by doing that. Um, I'd need to figure out a placement for the coil and that gas tank right there. And I just stuck the plugs in, just hand tight, finger tight actually. And I need to pull them back out and uh, gap them, make sure they're right. You know, these are brand new, but <clears throat> the gap would pretty tight tight so I need to just verify before fighting that and then once I get it wired up I'm I want to make sure each of them are sparking as I'm cranking it over you can see I got the starter mounted the uh, cutoff switch mounted the uh, frame I mean the, the fuse mounted so now I can come off of here with all my wiring and it would be fuse protected. And I went ahead and mounted a, a good ground strap right to the transmission, which seemed to really make a, a big difference. The heavy duty cables, this is the heavy duty cable on the other side too. And going to the uh, battery cutout switch and then a heavy cable coming up to the starter in it spins it over much better. Now, and this is the same battery I was cranking in the previous videos. My sport coupe up at my dad's place, I brought that battery and bringing it back and forth until I really need two batteries. And uh, it was it was slow cranking up there. And I'm thinking whether it's the uh, the the cables that are the problem up there. I need to clean up, you know, I, I sanded this down. When I took that bolt out on the transmission, I sanded a good spot there and bolted it down so it gets good contact. And uh, I think that's about it for now. Oh, I, I mounted the generator just to have it mounted and ready to, uh, I'm not gonna hook up the, uh, water pump just because I don't want a fan blade spinning and if I get it started I have to look at putting a radiator on it so until that point I'm not going to do that 
I'm gonna get started probably on putting this time pull the timing pin, get it top dead center, and start working on the distributor and mounting the coil and then switch over to gas. Oh, the other thing I did, just because I'm in my house basement, is I drug out this rusty old exhaust pipe and muffler. And there's a big split in it, but it's better than nothing. And I can open the garage door and hopefully the exhaust gases will go out the garage. But I may need to actually try to What's in here, girl? I may need to put some good tires and rims on this and uh, push it out of the garage, you know, before running it much. But it's getting close, ready to uh, hear it run again. All right, everybody, take care and uh, see you next week.